Keep watching Charis TV. Hello viewers. My name is Noma Kwezingalini and I'm from Pretoria East, which is not far from here. I first heard about Charis through my father because he was or still is a follower of Scorn, uh, the ministry of the late prophet TV Joshua. And that's how we discovered Charis. What made me come here first was, first time it was because of him and he thought, okay, let's go during the week. This time around, uh, some things were happening and delays were happening in my life that I figured that, Lord, I have to come here seeking a solution. So that's why I came here, because I needed solution and I needed direction. So today I had the honestly wonderful opportunity to meet the servant of God and to get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with him in his office. So entering his office, it's a very warm environment, ca calming as well. You can feel that really this is a place where you can come and just hear from God through his servant. So when I entered, he greeted, I greeted of course, and then he asked me where I'm from. Uh, of course, I told him so. He was also curious as to how I met, how I heard about the ministry and such. And I told him, as I told you previously. And then is when he started to prophesy. So the first thing he mentioned was the delays in my life, which have been with me for quite a, a long time. So... When, when he talked about that, he talked about the fact that I had been just as finished, I had just finished my degree and that I was excited when finishing my degree that I would get a job and life would progress. But then there were hiccups and that's been true. And that evidence has been even to get the degree was a struggle as well to a point where I had to go to another country to study. And that's when I got it. And then he talked about my family as well. He mentioned my br father and my brother that we're also going through the same thing as well as a half brother which I, who I've never met but he was saying that he's also in the same situation and that it seems like a family thing and that it's not just us. And that was kind of surprising because even in this I hadn't really thought about him because as I mentioned I haven't met him and it just sort of dawned on me and made me realize that really this has been a spiritual attack and then he also mentioned my mother and saying that she's also ha having health problems which is true uh, with her feet sometimes she doesn't sleep she some there was a time she even lost her hair and he was confirming and saying it's a blood disease and I was very happy to know that God actually would also speak about that because it's been a source of struggle for her for some years trying to even find out with her doctor what's going on and then the man of God confirmed that that just shows that it's spiritual as well. And then I asked him whether or not I had made the right decision of coming back from Lesotho, coming back to South Africa. And he actually confirmed that, yes, I did make the right decision because that was a bit of a worry for me in saying that perhaps I went out of the path that God had wanted me to stay there. And he said, no, you made the right decision. Afterwards, he spoke about my destiny but before that he talked about the headaches because i would get headaches on either side of my head and feel like it's pounding and he was saying it's an attack one of the things that the devil's trying to use to attack my destiny my future and he said that that is going to that is a thing of the past and i truly believe that <laughs> so i'm just happy that he didn't just speak about me but also about my family because when I came in there I was also thinking about them and saying Lord speak to me and use me to also impact their lives because I know how much of a struggle it's been in our lives in general so I'm really thankful that I got to meet him and he also told me that he wanted to pray for my mother and I'm happy about that <laughs> and yeah in the name of Jesus Jesus, remembering the 
this lady. I pray through your life, let the family be free. Pray for the brother to be free. Give him a new job. I pray for you to find a space. I know that you are God and you will always be God. I pray against all disappointments in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray against disappointments. The spirit of disappointing you is leaving you today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the healing of the mother. In Jesus' name. Amen. With regard to my destiny, because I had done a law degree outside of South Africa, so I had to go through the South African Qualifications Authority to evaluate the degree so that they can t say that the degree is the same as the degree that in South Africa. So hi, there were delays, so many delays that we even had to call many people, people in authority. One, the first pers person we talked to was unable to help us. Then we went, a colleague of my mother called someone above him. And he even at some point said that we were interfering with the processes. And you could see, hear that he didn't want to help us. And then my mother eventually, they got to the, the CEO. And as we had she had spoken to the CEO and I was about to give the details, my mom just said, okay, just check one last time. And there it was, the certificate. <laughs> so even that was a fight, even to get driver's license, because when you apply for jobs, they ask for driver's license. I failed twice. So after that, I just realized that, Lord, I, this is a lot, because it seems like everything I'm trying, there's a block, there's a block. And which is the, what the man of God said, it's a spiritual, it's spiritual that p someone had put us in a cage and saying that I'm going to fight this the destiny. Because even with my brother, he's working somewhere, but it's a job that is kind of a joke, honestly. It's not in the field that he studied, which is IT. And he didn't even want to do it, but because the need for having a job and money, so he's doing it. And then with my father, and he's an evangelist in ministry, and even that ministry is going in circles. So it was also just not really for me only, but for my family. In all honesty, I think I was starting to lose hope that, you know, maybe this is like my portion in life that I just struggle with everything. So speaking to the man of God, and it was that confirmation and kind of that stirring of hope and faith that God is not quiet he's not silent and that he sees what i'm going through honestly how i feel is a rejuvenation of hope because i think the worst thing of going through like any kind of difficulty is when you start to lose that hope that th to lose that thing of saying that you know there is a chance to come out of this that there is a victory and breakthrough at the end so when the man of God was prophesying and really just speaking to every single problem, not just in my life, but also in my family's life, it was that restoration of hope and saying that, you know what, God, you really aren't blind to this, that you really are hearing my prayers, you're really hearing our prayers, and you're seeing our heart and saying that, that thing of saying that, my child, I still have you. I still see you and as I'm speaking through the, the man of God it's that confirmation of, of saying that don't lose hope don't lose faith and believe that even anything that you go through I'm still there with you to people who are experiencing hardships in life and we all do experience them all I can say is that never stop looking for help never ever stop looking for help because once you li once you stop looking for help, it's almost like you're giving up. And that's what I can say. Don't give up because God is there. He sees. He hears. And for you to keep on persevering and keep on fighting, God eventually will listen to you and will come through for you. That's what I can say.